Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video and welcome to the long awaited and highly requested Hack the Box series. Uh, and yeah, uh, welcome. So a few things I want to point out before we actually move forward with today's video. And one of them is one of the reasons why I'm doing this is because you guys requested to do this as I mentioned. Uh, for a, a channel uh, or an engaged community like the way we have uh, right over here. Uh, I always prefer using Volna because it, it is, uh, it, well, it offers a solution where you guys can go and try it out for yourself. Whereas with Hack the Box, I actually have to make videos of machines that are already retired. And uh, for some people, you really do not want to pay for the VIP subscription. And that's not for everyone, but a lot of you have actually told me this. And that's why I also, you know, went with Volna. But uh, for those of you requesting me to use Hack the Box as well, here it is. And as uh, I've mentioned before, and I mentioned again, the purpose of my CTF videos on this channel is not to show both my skills, or to sort of go through the machine as quickly as possible, it is to explain some of the concepts, uh, you know, to the sol uh, to, you know, to, to essentially show you the solutions behind problems, or to show you the exploits for certain vulnerabilities, and to essentially teach you something. That's the purpose of my CTF videos. So do not take them as me sort of showing my skill. I really am not interested in that because. As I, as I've mentioned before, CTF challenges are a good way to learn, uh, you know, how to use tools and how to essentially get into the mindset of a breaker or a person who you essentially tinkers with everything. Uh, it really is not a uh, representative of, of your skills in the real world because in the real world, you're dealing with uh, very different environments. Uh, but with that being said, uh, enough of my blabbering and let's get started. So I'm starting off with the oldest one. And I'm just going to go through them chronologically, or you guys can actually post which one you wanted. I ran a poll on Twitter, and this was the first one that you guys recommended, and the name is Lame. All right, so I do not think I've done this. I actually had to create a new account so that I could get the VIP subscription, uh, and uh, we're going to get started. So I, I've already run an Nmap scan here, and I'm just going to run it for you. Sorry, that is the actual uh, VPN connection. Let me just open up a terminal here so that we can get started with this CTF challenge. So I'm going to be going through this semi live. Uh, I don't know if I've gone through this box before, uh, but we'll see what happens anyway. Uh, so let's get started here. Uh, let me just change to my desktop here and uh, let me just cat the, the results here. Uh, so the name of the box is lame. And if we go through the results, my scan was very simple. It was a, uh, you know, ba banner grabbing scan uh, with uh, the default scripts uh, set to enabled and an aggressive scan. Uh, and as you can see here, we have a port 21, which is FTP, and that's running VS FTPD. That is already a vulnerable service. Uh, it looks like anonymous FTP is allowed. So we'll also check that out in a second. Uh, and we'll see if we can do anything, although I doubt it because there is no web server running as far as I've seen. Uh, we have an SSH port running here, which is running, um, which is running a non-vulnerable service. I'm pretty sure of that. OpenSSH has a v has very few vulnerable services, so uh, that also is something that comes with experience knowing that. And we have uh, Samba here, uh, which does look like it is running a vulnerable version uh, of vulnerable software version here. So we'll also check that out, and that is NetBIOS, of course. Uh, so we'll check that out in a second. So let's start off with. Uh, and as you can see right over here, we get uh, the the default script results in regards to the um, to, to the uh, to the SMB, sorry, and that is, as we know is running Samba, and you have the Samba software version right over here. All right, so um, that's pretty much it for the results in regards to Nmap. Uh, if we take a look at the anonymous FTP login first, that should uh, yield uh, what exactly is going on here. So FTP. 10.10.10.3 and we're logging in anon anonymously. So anonymous and I'm just going to hit enter and login is successful. All right, so let me just list the files in here. Uh, we don't get anything here. Let me just list all files. Uh, what is the current working directory? Can I go a step uh, back here? Uh, sorry, I actually uh, mistyped uh, that. Uh, can I go a step back? No, it looks like we are currently in the root directory and there are no other directories here. So it looks like we're locked in to this directory. I'm not sure what it is. Although, as I mentioned, this would not be very useful, uh, but we'll come to see what that is. All right. So yeah, we'll come back to this in a second if we need it. Uh, well, actually, I want to go through the results before I actually clear that up. Um, so um, so we, we are running VSFTPD 2.3. 
uh where is it uh let me just see if i can find it the, um sorry the, there it is up here yeah vst ftpd 2.3.4 and i know that is vulnerable uh through a metasploit um exploit which i'll show you right now uh if we use search exploit uh which is what i really recommend uh, a lot because it it's just awesome uh, VSFTPD 2.3.4 and I search for that you can see we have a backdoor command execution right over here with a metasploit so uh, msfdb start let's start the metasploit uh, database here and uh, we'll start up the metasploit console msf console and we'll search for that exploit so that is VSFTPD 2.3.4 and uh, we'll just give this a second for it to start the metasploit framework apologies if my virtual machine appears slow um, so coming back uh, to the whole hack the box uh, ideas that I had with Vonhub, uh, they're essentially out there to teach people. And I just wanted to put that out there so you guys understand the difference between my channel uh, and others. All right. So let us search for this right now. So search for VSFTPD, sorry, VSFTPD 2.3.4, 3.4. And we hit enter. And um, here it is right over here. So let's see if this exploit does work. That'll be extremely easy. Uh, so yeah, if that works, then that's uh, great for us. This box, I presume, is quite easy, but we'll get to see that right now. So we can get to set the R host right over here. So let's do that right now. R host is sorry, R host is 10.10.10.3, and I'm gonna hit enter. And hopefully, you already know the Metasploit syntax. Uh, this is very basic in terms of using Metasploit, as you probably would have seen the commands I'm using are basic, the use, set, search, etc. So now I'm just going to hit exploit or you can hit run, depending on what you want to do. Uh, you can also set the port, which as we know, FTP uh, is configured correctly on this machine. So I'm just going to hit exploit uh, and let's see if this exploit is successful. We'll give that a few seconds to send the payload uh, to the service here or to the specific port running on the machine. We'll give that a second here. Um, for some reason, it's paused here. And there we are. So we got the banner here, uh, which is telling us, uh, I don't think we, we do we need to enter a password. So I'm just going to enter, which is probably prompting for the uh, login for VSFTPD, which means there is a misconfiguration error here. Uh, so yeah, exploit completed, no session was created. Uh, that's weird. Let me just run that one more time. Uh, I think if we log in with uh, well, it's logged in user 331. All right, yeah. So it is in a locked in environment. So this exploit, I th I'm pretty sure will not work, but let's try that one more time. Uh, anonymous, let's see if that works. Uh, I doubt it uh, really, because as you can see here, uh, the user is specified as something very, very different. It's user 331. So I doubt that's gonna work. Yeah, so that did definitely did not work. So let me just stop that right over here and we'll go back and we'll exit from Metasploit, the Metasploit framework here, um, or the Metasploit uh, console. So I'm just gonna clear this up and uh, let us just explore the results one more time here. And let's look at the other services. As I mentioned, OpenSSH does not seem to have anything vulnerable uh, over there. When we talk about Samba, I'm pretty sure this is vulnerable. So let's perform a search exploit for that. So we're looking for Samba version 3.0.20. Let me just copy that right over here and we'll run that search exploit command. Sorry. Uh, search exploit and we'll paste that in there. And uh, yeah, we have um, the site redirect. Uh, that's really for web apps, as you can see, PHP, PHP. Uh, PHP once more, and we have um, a denial of service. And finally, we have one that we're looking for over here, and we have a heap overflow. I'm pretty sure this one is the one that works. Uh, that is the username map script, which is with Metasploit. So let's actually try this right now, and we'll search for that as well. So uh, yeah, it looks like this box is going to be a Metasploit based box. And again, yeah, it looks like it's going to be an easy one. So let's just try this right now. Uh, and we'll start our Metasploit console. Uh, apologies if I'm not using Terminator or Tmux. Uh, I will get that set up. I've just set up this uh, virtual machine. Um, all right, so let's search for this right now. So search for Samba uh, 3.0.20 and we're just gonna hit enter right now. So just give me a second there and we're gonna hit enter and we're looking for the user map script right over here. Uh, and there it is right over here, which as you can see, the rank is excellent. And yeah, this pretty this is a pretty old exploit, and we we have seen this actually before on uh, Metasploitable one, I believe. No, Metasploitable two, if I'm not wrong. We have seen the uh, sort of the same configuration. 
So yeah, uh, this is really weird. I didn't expect this to be the case, but anyway, it looks like a common configuration for many CTF challenges online. So let's use this uh, exploit here. Hopefully this one works. So we're just gonna show the options here. Um, I'm gonna set our host here, uh, set our host, um, and we're gonna set it to 10.10.10.3, uh, 10, 10, and we're gonna hit enter. Uh, the port was set correctly yeah that is uh, uh we have a net bias running over there so yeah over port 139 um so we're just going to leave that as it is and we're just going to hit exploit and i'm going to hit enter and we're just going to give that a few seconds to run the exploit and uh, yeah it looks like it was able to send it um so started re the reverse tcp double handler on uh, my local ip which is uh, provided to me by hack the box Accepted the first client connection, second command echo. It looks like it's sent it. Yeah, there we are writing to socket A uh, and writing to socket B, reading. So we are receiving and we got uh, what, what appears to be the uh, the shell, uh, if I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, mistaken. Let me just see if I can actually uh, hit. Yeah, there we are. So we do have a shell. So let me just, um, let me just see if I can get a shell. Uh, yeah, it does look like it has Python over here, which is excellent. Fantastic. Uh, so we do have Python. Uh, oh, yeah, there we are. So we did get a, a shell here through Python, which is awesome. Um, so let me just hit ID. And uh, as you can see, we are root. So yeah, we do not have to perform any privilege escalation. So quite an easy box. Uh, what is our current working directory? So let us go and get the flags, which for hack the box are... Uh, root and um, I'm not sure what the other one is, but I know it's usually found in home um, Let me just see where the home is so CD Macis, I believe uh, it looks like the FTP directory was locked into there, which is interesting uh, But we already have got an exploit So I'll also be looking at whether we can exploit it through FTP, which is also quite interesting So we'll look at that. Yeah user.txt and root.txt. So let me just print out the user here so you guys can actually see that it does work user.txt and we got the user there let's go back home and the directory is not set oh yeah we have to go a step back and a step back here uh, because we are using python uh, sorry um, step back uh, and a step back here uh, and we should be back to the home sorry to the root directory so cd root and i'm just going to hit enter oops sorry about that um cd root uh, apologies uh, if i'm mistyping some of the commands my keyboard is quite away from me and we have the root.txt file right over here uh, so we're just going to look at the root.txt and uh, that should give us access there and voila so yeah, that was a very, very, very simple box. Apologies for that if you guys were expecting something advanced, although I am starting chronologically. And you can also rec recommend to me the ones you want to see. Uh, the next one that you guys recommended to me was Valentine. And there were a few others uh, that were Windows boxes, so I'll be taking a look at those ones. Uh, but that's pretty much going to be it for this video, guys. Let me know if I made any mistakes or if I missed anything. I would really like to know what you guys think, uh, given that you've done this box. Or if you haven't already, uh, you can go ahead and get the VIP subscription uh, and you can try it out for yourself. Uh, that being said, uh, the Valnob series is going to continue. I'm going to start uh, and continue the Python and Shell scripting series. Uh, as well as the uh, exploit development series, which is uh, something I've been working on for a while now. That being said, that's going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll be seeing you in the next video. Peace.